On November 19th, San Diegans will vote in a special election to decide who will replace Mayor Bob Filner. Candidates have until September 20th to file their intent to run. Here with some insight on what to expect in this race are political science professors Brian Adams and Carl Luna. Welcome back. Good to be here. Good to be here. Brian, tell us about the essentials uh, for a candidate in a short race like this. What do they need? Well, the first thing they need to do is raise a lot of money in a very short period of time. Um, they need to use that money to increase their name recognition, get their face out there to voters, get an early start, and they need to line up uh, supporters, um, interest groups as well, and also to work on a get out the vote drive. Um, because there's a very short period of time, you've got to start doing that right away. In particular for the Democratic candidates, typically in special elections, uh, Democratic turnout is lower. Is Okay, and, and going on with this, when it comes to uh, following the Filner scandal, what do you think, Carl, that uh, voters will be looking for in particular candidates? They're going to want a candidate who that they, they, they'd like to see on their TV for the next few years who's not going to be prone to scandal. They're not, not going to want another hugger. They're going to want somebody <laughs> who uh, seems competent in the job but has a good personality, and the personality you bring to the table early on in the campaign will largely be the one you're measured on. And, and following up on that, David Alvarez just tossed his name in the hat today uh, to run for candidacy. What is this going to do to the race? Well, it changes the dynamic entirely. Mike Aguirre had thrown his name into the hat, or hat into the ring, as they say, and that was going to be a minor impact, maybe throw you into a runoff. But David Alvarez could significantly cut into Nathan Fletcher's vote. There's even, if uh, Mr. Faulkner targets Mr. Fletcher for his negative ads, uh, David Alvarez could beat him and end up going into the runoff campaign, which could give the Republicans a major advantage. And Brian, Nathan Fletcher was the first to announce uh, his candidacy. What do you think his strengths are with the voters? Well, I think he, he has some name recognition because he ran for mayor previously, and he's lining up a lot of support. Um, he's going to be very well funded. I think the big problem he's going to have is with trying to convince voters he's not a political opportunist. That, you know, he switched parties. He was recently a Republican, then went, became an independent, and now he's a Democrat, and trying to convince voters that he's really doing that because he's really had a change of opinion or the party has left him, as you said, rather than that he's simply being a political opportunist and he's doing it to gain political That's advantage. That's a little bit of convincing to do in a short amount of time. Yes, that, yes, okay, absolutely. and um, Carl, what about Councilman Faulkner now? He's uh, one of the Republican candidates. What do you see his strengths are in this race? Yeah, he is the de facto Republican candidate. The party has surrounded him. Uh, Carl DeMaio decided not to run. That's his major strength. He's got a unified Republican base to draw on, the money, power, and the voter uh, turnout that comes with that. His difficulties is he's a council member who doesn't necessarily stand out from the council outside of his district. He got some name recognition with the mayoral debacle being the one who helped the mediation. But he's going to have to introduce himself to San Diegans, and in a short election, that's a difficult challenge. Let's talk about women or the lack thereof. Uh, start with you, Brian. Um, there's one woman so far who has her uh, name. She's filed papers. She's a CPA who works from home. Um, but so far, not a whole lot of women. Uh, I'm a little... Are you surprised by that? Yes, I'm actually very surprised because given the context of this election, you think female candidates would have a slight advantage um, in terms of you know what happened with Filner and everything else. And there are a number of uh, prominent uh, female Democrats who could potentially run, but so far they've all decided not to. Yeah, and let's uh, talk about that, Carl. So Lori Saldana, um, who, el who else might... So put well, their names in the hat? Well, people were wondering if Donna Fry would try to right, run again, but no. that, that seems highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. And she said no, and she's not going to change her mind. She's done with politics, and she's in public service. People were running about Tony Atkins, right. but she's got a great uh, d uh, deal going in Sacramento. She's going to be Speaker of the Assembly one day, possibly. Then she's looking at State Senate, National Senate. You don't come back to local dinner theater when you're looking at a, a statewide or national venue. Let's talk about uh, also who's not running uh, and, and going with this. Brian, Carl DeMaio opted out. That surprised a lot of people. What's your take on that? Well, I think he was weighing whether it would be better for his political career to run for Congress or to run for mayor again. Um, I think he decided after co consulting with the Republican Party and his, his political supporters that it makes more sense for him to run to Congress. Um, I think he probably has a better shot at winning the congressional seat, um, depending on the political wins, than, than he does for, for running for mayor. And, and he lost one race already, right, if that's right. not a, a, an indicator. Uh, and losing the same race twice isn't particularly good for your political career. For a uh, long term. And, and Carl, what about Todd Gloria? He declined to run as well. What do you think that's about? Uh, I think Councilman Gloria, Council President Gloria, likes the position he has as Council President and Acting Mayor. It'll get him a lot of name recognition without a lot of risk. He'll be able to pursue an agenda, build his base, and he's a candidate for the next mayor's race or the race after that and other potential statewide offices. 
Well, last year at this time, not even quite last year at this time, voters were inundated with campaign flyers, with robocalls, TV ads, really intense TV ads. Um, do you think that's going to happen again? Um, it might, depending on whether the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and their allies are willing to put in the money to actually make this, uh, to, to really spend a lot of money on this race. It's unclear whether they will or not. Clearly, they did last time. And I'm not sure whether they're going to decide they're going to put in a ton of money now or whether they're just going to wait in three years and then make that the big race. Well, we will certainly see, and we'll be talking to you both again, I'm sure, about this. Political science professors Carl Luna and Brian Adams, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.